In this example video, we're going to look at exercise 517, and it's going to show us how we can record our transactions in both the purchases and our cash payments journal. So the transactions related to the purchases and cash payments completed by Whiskaway Cleaning Services during the month of May are as follows. So on May 1st, we issued check number 57 to Biosafe Supplies, Inc. in payment of an account for $345. So. Anytime you see issued check, we know we're paying out cash. And the journal that we use when we pay out cash for any reason at all goes into our cash payments journal. So we come down to our cash payments journal, and on May 1st, the check that we're issuing is check number 57. Notice that, again, your column headings are really important. We have only one credit column, and that's for cash, because we are spending out money, and that's what's going into our cash payments journal. So that's always going to be our only credited account. And then we have to ask ourselves why. And it says that we wrote check 57 to Biosafe Supplies in payment of our account. Again, account and paid. Accounts payable it means we're reducing our accounts payable. We're paying off somebody that we pay, owed money to previously. So do our debits and credits equal? Yes, we have a debit to accounts payable. We have a credit to cash account that's being debited. The account that's being debited here is accounts payable, so we have to indicate whose accounts payable. So in this case, Biosafe Supplies. Since this transaction affects accounts payable, we know that we have to post it to the subsidiary ledger, so we have to post a check mark here to indicate that we have in fact posted it to the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. On the third, it says we purchased cleaning supplies on account from Bright and Shine Products, Inc. So purchased on account has to go into our purchases journal. It only records um, purchases that we have made on account. So on May 3rd, only credit column that we have is accounts payable because we're buying something on account. We're spending $200, and they said we're purchasing cleaning supplies, and they have a specific column for cleaning supplies because they purchase those frequently. So we're gonna debit our cleaning supplies. So debits and credits equal. We're debiting cleaning supplies for 200. We're crediting accounts payable for 200. We need to indicate whose accounts payable we are debiting. So we have Bright and Shine products it is something that we need to post to our subsidiary ledger, and we know that if we have to post it to our subsidiary ledger, we have to include a check mark in the post reference column. So we put in that check mark to indicate we've posted it to the subsidiary ledger. On the 8th, we issued check number 58 to purchase equipment from Carson Equipment Sales for $2,860. So anytime we're issuing a check, we know we have to go to our cash payment. So on May 8th, check number 58, again, cash is leaving our business, so we are spending money. We're making a purchase, but we're paying it with cash. So it goes into our cash payments journal, not our purchases journal. And they said that what we are purchasing is equipment. So we look at our two columns that have debits, accounts payable or other. So we are spending cash other on something other than paying off our accounts payable. So it has to go into the other accounts column of $2,860. And the other account that's being affected is our equipment. So we have a debit of $2,860 going to equipment. We have a credit to cash for $2,860. Are debits and credits equal? This transaction has not affected accounts payable, so it does not get posted to our subsidiary ledger. However, it does affect the other accounts column. And if it affects the other accounts column, we have to go to that other account, being equipment, on that date, meaning May 8th, and post it to that general ledger. So in the problem, they told us equipment is account number 18. So we would go to the general ledger, account number 18, and post a debit to the equipment for $2,860 on that date. 
On the 12th, it says we purchased cleaning supplies on account from Porter Products, Inc. So we've purchased on account goes into our purchases journal. We've purchased it on account, so our accounts payable has to go up. And what we are purchasing is cleaning supplies. So it's going to go into that cleaning supplies column. And who do we owe money to? We owe money to Porter Products. It's affecting accounts payable, so we'd have to post it to our subsidiary ledger. On the 15th, we issued check number 59 to Bowman Electrical Services in payment of an account. So when we've issued a check, we have to go to our cash payment. So on the 15th, we issued check number 59, and it says that we're paying out some money. So we're paying out $145 and we're paying it in payment of an account, meaning we're paying off a portion of our accounts payable that we owed to them. Who did we owe? We owed Bowman Electrical Services. This affects our accounts payable account, so we have to post it to our accounts payable subsidiary ledger. And again, our debits and credits equal for that transaction. On the 18th, it says that we've purchased supplies on account from BioSafe Supply Inc. for $240. So on the 18th, we owe BioSafe Supplies Inc. We owe them $240 for those cleaning supplies. And again, this affects our accounts payable account, so we have to post it to our accounts payable subsidiary ledger. On the 20th, it says that we purchased electrical repair services from Bowman Inc. Um, electrical Service on account for $110. So we're still purchasing it, and we're purchasing on account. So we owe someone $110. Who we owe is Bowman Electrical Service. And what we're buying from them is electrical repair. So if we go back up to that small kind of chart of accounts that they gave to us, we have electrical service expense. So that's what we're going to affect. So looking at our debit columns here, we are debiting an account other than cleaning supplies. So the, uh, the account that we are affecting is our electrical service expense account for that same $110. And again, if it affects the other account column, we have to go to the general ledger. Specifically for this account would be account number 53. And on this date, we would have to post to account number 53 a debit for $110. This also affects accounts payable, so we'd also have to go to our accounts payable subsidiary ledger and post that transaction as well. On the 26th, it says we issued check number 60 to Bright and Shine Products in payment of the May 3rd invoice. So anytime we're issuing a check means cash is leaving our business, has to go into the cash payments journal. And it's for the invoice of May 3rd. So on May 3rd, we purchased um, cleaning supplies from them on account in the amount of $200, and now we are paying off that balance. So on the 26th, check number 60, we are spending $200 to pay off that invoice or that bill that we had from them. So we're paying off our accounts payable, our debits and credits equal, and who we're paying is Bright and Shine. This transaction does affect accounts payable, so we would have to post it to our accounts payable subsidiary ledger. And finally, we issued check number 61 in payment of salaries for $5,600. So we know if we're issuing a check, it has to go to our cash payments. And we're paying our salaries. So we have a salary expense, account number 51. So we come down here, and on the 31st, check number 61, we're spending $5,600. And we're spending it on something 
other than accounts payable. So we're gonna put it in the other accounts column and the account that's gonna be affected is our salary expense. So we would have to go on that date to account number 51 in the general ledger to salaries expense and post a debit to salaries expense for $5,600. It's now the end of the month, so we wanna total up each column. So we would total up our accounts payable and we would then go to account number 21 in our general ledger and post a credit in total of $910 on May 31st to account number 21. We would do the same thing for our cleaning supplies account. So in our cleaning supplies, we had $800 in total cleaning supplies. We know that our cleaning supplies account, they told us is account number 14. So we would go to account number 14 in our general ledger and post that we did a debit of $800 in total on May 31st. And then under our electrical service expense was the only other one that we had. So we would have to post a check mark underneath that total to indicate that we have posted that individually to any of those accounts that were affected. We do the same in our cash payments journal. So in that other accounts column, we would add it up to get how much in total that we affected those other accounts. So in this case, 8,460. And again, all we would do as a reference is post a check mark because I can't give you a specific account number that the that 8,460 is going to because it's going to two different accounts and we've already posted those individually. Accounts payable, we would do the same. We'd add it up. $690 would get posted to account number 21. And finally, in our cash, 9,150 would get posted to account number 11.